The Greg has a new bit. He's such a joker, wondering what it is. He's playing poker. Check out all these bets and bluffs that he's called in. Welcome to Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the second episode of Greg Goes All In. I am your host, Greg, occasionally known to go all in. Just finished playing a game of $10 known limit on global poker. Let's get right into it. Let's check out some hands with some big pots. All right, first up, we're three-handed starting out the game. We've got King Jack in the big blind. The button opens to 30. I three bet to $1.20 with my King Jack, two Royals. And then the button four bets me to 210. I don't like it because King Jack can be easily dominated in so many situations like this, but I'm a big fish, so I call. Flop comes six, Jack nine, rainbow. Action goes check, check, thank God. The turn is the 10 of clubs. I feel pretty good about my hand with top pair, good kicker. So I bet three to 425. And then she puts me all in for $4.80 more. And so I think a little bit about this. I doubt that over pairs would have checked on the flop on such a connected board. It's so it seems really weird, it seems really fishy. So I call. Turns out we're good. We're up against eight nine offsuit, and I have no idea why that that is in someone's four betting range. But you gotta love the micro stakes for that. Uh, I think she's trying to get she's trying to get a semi bluff through. Uh, with that open ender on the turn, but thankfully she doesn't improve and we take this down. Next hand, I've got ace king suit in the small blind. We're still three handed. The button opens to 30. I three bet to $1.20. The big line calls. The button four bets to $3.60. I'm thinking people's three bets and four betting ranges are pretty wide at this point, seeing as we are three handed and I do have a very premium hand. So I go ahead and five bet, shove all in. And they all fold and we take this down pre flop. Next hand, we've got seven deuce suited in the big blind. We gotta do it for the vlog. We have a discount because we're in the big blind. The cutoff raises, we call, we go heads up. Flop is king, five, three, two spades. That's that's pretty good. What else can you ask for when you've got seven deuce? And action goes check, check. The turn is eight of clubs. We don't improve to a flush just yet, but we're feeling that they're still pretty weak. So we make a semi bluff for 45 cents and unfortunately they call. No matter, rivers, spade, we hit our flush with the worst hand in poker. I check hoping to induce a bluff from the player seeing as they seem pretty weak, but they check it back and I take it down. Next up, we've got kings in the small blind, the button limps. I want to put more money in this pot, so I open 40 cents from the small blind, the big blind folds, and the button calls and we go heads up to a flop, which comes 8992 hearts. I bet 60 cents trying to get value from an over pair, any pocket pair really, any heart draw. And he calls. The turn is a diamond, bringing in the second flush draw. At this point, I think it's more likely that he's on a draw than he has a nine. So I shove all in to deny equity from those draws. He snap calls with a nine. Our kings get cracked. I am a sad boy. All right, this next hand's kind of goofy, okay? In my notes, I call this the goofy hand. So I fold earlier in this hand, but I wanted to include it because I think we get some player info from this hand. So here we are at the river, Shoe Dog versus DTC, which I think stands for down to call because Shoe Dog has been betting all three streets and this middle position player, DTC, keeps calling. So we go to showdown and it turns out Shoe Dog has been betting all three streets with a pair of fives. And DTC has been calling with pocket sevens. Like, like what? So we make a mental note of this and in the future we try very hard to get into a hand with shoe dog. Spoiler, we do. Stay tuned to see it. All right, next up we've got pocket deuces in the cutoff. One limper to me. I open to 40 cents. The big blind and the limper call. Hoping to set mine here. We don't hit our set. Instead, we hit quads. We flop quads. I am so excited. It gets checked to me. I bet pot. Everyone folds. Yeah, I got a little too excited with those quads there. I probably should have checked and given the opponents a chance to catch up. Flopping quads, getting minimum value. All right, next hand, we're battling it out against this maniac player, Shoe Dog, once again. I've got 6-8 suited in the button. The under the gun limps, I raise to 40, and the big blind, the maniac, and the under the gun player call. The flop comes 6 9 seven, two spades. I flop an open-ended straight flush draw and bottom pair. Great flop for us. It checks to me and I open to 80 cents. And then this maniac player raises, min raises me to $1.60. The undergun player gets out of the way. I debate whether or not to get more money in now or just flat and I end up flatting just to keep his bluffs in. The turn is eight of clubs. Now I make two pair, but there's a four liner to a straight. The maniac leads out for $4.63 into a pot of 9.25. I've seen him make similar plays with worse and even if he does have a 10, to make this straight, I have so many outs. I've got nine spades left to make a flush, two sixes to make a boat, or two eights to make a boat. So I rip it all in. 
and he calls. Turns out we are behind. He does have a 10, but we hit the 6 on the river and double up through him after making a boat and sailing to Value Town. All right, next up we got Ace King in the cutoff. Under the gun opens to 30 cents. Under the gun plus two calls. I say that's not enough money, so I re race to a dollar twenty. Under the gun shoves to call his entire stack. Dollar forty seven doesn't reopen the betting, so all we can do is just call. So under the gun plus two calls, and I call as well. Flop is five King eight two spades checks to me, and I bet about a third. And the player calls. Turn is a seven diamonds. I bet dollar sixty six into seven fifty six. I'm just hoping to get his entire stack in on the river if it comes out clean. The river is a 4. It checks to me, but I check back since any 6 on the board makes a straight. Get a little bit scared there. Ace-King is good. Turns out this middle position player was just stationing off with a pair of 5s. And the under the gun player had pocket 10s. Turned out good for me. I wish I could have stacked them both, but happy to take down this $10 pot. Alright, in this hand I make a really big bluff. Let's see if it pays off or not. We've got 10-5 in the big blind in a 4-way limped pot. So we've got a big blind special coming up right here. We've got six, eight, four, two diamonds on the flop. The Maniac player leads out for 10 cents, folds to me, and with some backdoor draws here, I call. The turn is another six, and I check to him. He leads out for uh, another 10 cents, and a size you can tell I picked up from this Maniac player is that he bets very small when he has specifically bottom pair. I think the six is a good hand to bluff on, so I raise him to 60 cents, but he calls. The river is another 8, which could be scary because I lose fold equity from top pair now because since it makes a boat. But I really don't think that they had top pair on this board. I genuinely believe he has bottom pair. So I fire out a pot size bet of $1.80 praying for a fold, thinking to myself, what a stupid bluff. This person calls down anything. But amazingly, he, he folds and we take this pot down with 10 high, like a boss. All right, next hand, I've got ace four in the small blind. There's a new player at the table that just got stacked recently. It's the player in the hijack, and they've been very spewy since they got stacked, so I think they're very tilted. They opened to 20 cents. I might have gone a little spewy myself because I had lost a few hands in a row at this point, and my stack, while it's still at a good profit, wasn't as magnificent as it was before. So I 3-bet very lightly against this player, raising to 85 cents, and he jams for $3.45. I feel like he's doing this light, I've got an ace, I'm in a bit of a gambling mood, so I call. Turns out he's ahead, he's got pocket eights, but no worries, we smash an ace in the flop. We just have to dodge any other eights of the last two eights in the deck. I do, cherry on top, there's another ace on the river giving me trips, and I stack this player. Alright, I just want to show this king deuce hand because I want to show you that I do learn from my mistakes. Because last episode, I lost a bunch of money after calling a re-raise, uh, after saying I would fold to a re-raise. Um, so I'm in a very similar situation. I make two pair, but the flush draw does get there. I put on a small bet with plans to fold if I get re-raise. He does raise. Seems very similar to the last situation I was in last episode. So I fold, and he indeed shows the flush, so it feels good to have learned from my lessons. Alright, so that ends our session. We were in for $10, out for $22.95, giving us a nice profit of $12.95 over the span of two hours. We're making less than minimum wage here, but folks, we are playing to learn, not playing to earn. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you haven't checked out episode one, make sure you go do that. And as always, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and comment. It really helps out the channel. Really trying to grow in the early stages of this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'm Greg from Greg Goes All In, and make sure you always play 7 Deuce. Bye! Greg.